Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and this presentation is about general linear modeling in EEG lab LIMO. This is the second and last part of this presentation. The first one had to do with theory, and the second one is about practice. So EEG lab has been developed by us at UCSD, and LIMO has been developed by Cyril Pernay at the University of Edinburgh. LIMO is an extension of EEG Lab, but is available in the EEG Lab plugin manager. There's a link in the description for how to install both EEG Lab and LIMO. This presentation follows loosely uh, a section of the LIMO tutorial, so I invite you to visit the tutorial for more information. I put the link in the description. So first, let's get some data. We'll use data from a phase presentation experiment which has already become popular. It was published a couple of years ago and it includes MEG, EEG, fMRI, although not simultaneously EEG, fMRI. The original data set is huge, so we have reformatted it to BITS data set that only contains EEG data. BITS is the brain imaging data structure and it is a way to format your raw data so it contains all the information for other researchers to use. There is a video about BITS and EEG lab in the description below, so I'm not going to enter the details of BITS formatting. In the original data, there were multiple runs for each subject, so we have merged them. We have also formatted scanned electrode positions, so they're available within the BITS dataset. We have corrected event latencies and renamed some events. And we have resampled the data, it's not as, so it's not as large and can be used for tutorials. So it is the raw data with some modifications and all modifications of the comment documented in the readme file. The BIDS dataset also contains the EG Lab script used to convert the original data release uh, with this modified one. So I invite you to download this dataset on openneuro.org. It's about four gigabytes. So I'm going to describe the experiment briefly. There are three types of stimuli, famous faces, non-famous faces, and scramble faces. There's also three levels of repetition, first time presentation, second time presentation right after, third time presentation many trials after. Participants pressed the key based on how symmetric they thought each image was. The reason for using this task was because it can be performed equally well on face and non-face stimuli. This accessory task also forces uh, participants to keep attending to the image images presented to them. Here we need the condition computed per subject at the first level, so there's nine conditions total, three types of faces by three presentation order. For this simple tutorial, we're only going to uh, compare the EEG response to the type of face, but we could also perform repeated measure ANOVA to test main effect for faces and presentation order, as well as interaction between them. I'll link the LIMO tutorial in the description if you're interested in doing this more advanced analysis. So let's get started. First, make sure you have the right version of EEG Lab and LIMO installed on your environment. Uh, there's a link in the description, then uh, download the data. After you've downloaded the data, uh, this is how the folder for all participants look like. Then open MATLAB and start uh, EEG Lab. This is the pre-processing script with the different steps needed to pre-process the data. There is a video on pre-processing EEG data in bids, so I'm not going to repeat it here. I put the link in the description below. Briefly, first we import the data, second we clean it lightly, third we compute average reference while temporarily interpolating all the bad channels which have been removed, fourth we run ICN and remove bad components, fifth we clean the data more aggressively. This is slightly different from the other pipeline I've presented in the other bits video I was referring to. In the other pipeline, we clean the data only once before running ICA, and also ICA components are subtracted at the study level, not at the data set level. Here we do it in two steps uh, because there's a lot of eye movements. And if we clean the data across aggressively before running ICA, we're going to remove all of the portions of data containing I artifacts. Instead, we clean the data lightly to only remove portions of data containing very large artifacts. We run ICA and subtract ICA uh, artifact components, including I artifact components. Then we clean the resulting data more aggressively to remove smaller artifacts still present in the data. 
Finally, we extract data epochs and create an EGLAB study. So this is the script you can actually uh, do, it is, and you can do it easily from the graphic interface as well. And as you do it in the graphic interface, the script gets generated for you. So I will do it quickly in the graphic interface. Again, for more detail, I invite you to look at the video for going from raw data to group level analysis, which I'll link to the description. So here we go. And first, we're going to import the bits data set. So that's the folder downloaded for Open Neuro. There's many options here, and I'm not going to describe them. I refer you to the other video. We've imported the data. Then we're going to remove uh, uh, bad channels. So these are channels 61 from 64 to 64. It depends on your study. And once we remove the channels, uh, we're going to perform uh, artifact rejection using ASR. So that's the first one, that's the light one. So we only first select the first two steps. In this case here, uh, we apply it. And once it's done, uh, we perform, uh, we're going to perform average reference. So we reference uh, the, the data and we added the, interpolate the electrodes which have been removed and then remove them again. So now we interpolated the data, then we decompose the data using ICA. So here we have to enter an option PCA minus one. So we remove one dimension and because of the average reference process, it should detect automatically the rank, but just in case. Then we label the bad components using IC labels. And um, we also have to set thresholds for labeling components. Uh, again, everything is described in the other tutorial video. We remove these components from the data. So here, ask us to confirm. And once we do that, we can clean the data a little bit more aggressively. So we do the last two steps of ASR, uh, uh, as shown here. Once we've uh, done that, then we're ready to extract epochs. So these are the types of epochs. So these are all the nine types of stimuli, the famous pic pictures, the unfamiliar and the scramble pictures, presentation one and two and three. So we've extracted the epoch and uh, basically uh, now we've uh, pre-processed the data. So what's, what's the next step? Well, the next step is to create a study design that maybe use both for LIMO and by EEG lab native statistics function. So here we'll simply select the three types of stimuli, famous faces, non-famous faces, and scramble faces. And again, we'll do that interactively in EEG lab. So first we're going to create a study design. We're going to select the different types of images here, famous, familiar, and unfamiliar. And um, so that's, that's done. And now we're going to rename the design. We're going to call it stimuli uh, because we're comparing different types of stimuli. This is optional, but it's good to have a name uh, you can recognize. And the next step is to have EG Lab pre-compute measures. Not that this can be done before or after uh, creating a design. Pre-computing measures such as single trial ERP spectrum and ERSP is a prerequisite before running LIMO. Not that for ERP, since we already have signal trials, there is usually no need to recompute anything unless you choose to change the baseline, as we'll do here. But to be consistent with our measure, other measures like spectrums and ERSP, we'll still need to go through these steps. Here, we do not need to remove components labeled for rejection since we've already removed them. We should interpolate channels which were flagged as artifactual in some participants. So I'm going to go through these steps. Checking ERP, selecting the baseline, and uh, then pressing OK to perform the pre-computation. And so once it's pre-computed, we can use the standard EG Lab statistics just to look at the, at the data, in particular channel 65, uh, which was the channel used in the original study. So this is how channel 65 looks like. And I'm going to overlay the three conditions on top of each other so we can see the difference. So here I just changed the plotting options. And so here we go. So let's compare with this with the original, uh, original one from the, the paper. And so uh, it's, you can see that the waveform are quite similar. 
The time window in EGNAV is larger, so we can see that the ERP seems to be riding on a very slow oscillation at around 1 Hz. I'm not sure if it's a real feature of the data, but it might be worth looking into. In both cases, we can see that the N170 peak is large for faces compared to scramble faces, which is consistent with the literature. We can also see how the scramble image tends to lead to ERP more positive after 300 milliseconds when compared to the face conditions. We can also plot the uh, scalp topographies. So I'm going to select all the channels and then I go again in the parameters. I'm going to plot the scalp topographies between 160 and 180 uh, milliseconds. And um, so here it's going to plot the topographies. So the three conditions, famous, scrambled, and uh, unfamiliar. And I'm going to compute statistics, just standard statistics, and use FDR for correction for multiple comparisons. There's a lecture on statistics if you want to uh, understand exactly how, what it does. And here we can see uh, clearly the significant region. So that's an ANOVA across the three condition using EEG lab standard statistics. And you can also go on the command line and type EEGH to see all the commands you've used and copy that into your script and we run it as if you had done it from the interface. Now we're going to use LIMO. So first estimate model parameters and then look at the uh, GLM variables. And so we have three factors here plus the constant. It is important to remember that the order of these factors, since in LIMO they are usually designated as 1, 2, and 3. So let's remember that 2 are the scramble images. In general, we would want to list all the possible factors, so the 9 conditions uh, extracted for each dataset with each image type and presentation order. Then we can group factors at the second level if we need to. For example, we can group all the betas for faces compared to all the betas for scramble images. Because this is a tutorial and probably the first time you're using Nemo, we're going to make it simpler here and just look at the type of images. But just know that in general, it is better to use all the factors or variables available at the first level. So we're going to change here the uh, time limit and we're going to put uh, minus 50 to 600 milliseconds. It's just so that it calculates faster. We don't have to calculate every single sample. We can just select a specific time window. We press OK. You have to wait about like uh, 10 minutes here for everything to be computed. And once this is done, uh, you can go to second level analysis. And first you have to load the channel location that's automatically uh, generated in here. Then uh, you can compute your ANOVA. And so full repeated measure ANOVA, full scap analysis, bunch of questions, how many groups? Just one group, one group of subject here. Uh, what's the um, repeated factor level? And we have three. We want to use betas and parameters. So we have to select the file containing all the beta parameters, which is in the limo folder. Here I'm showing the file. Here it contains all the file for every single subject. So that's what this text file contains. Then we select which beta parameters. So there's four, one, two, three, plus the constant. We only want one, two, three. So we select these three beta parameters and then uh, we can give a name to this analysis so we can recognize it later. It asks us, this is the design matrix for the ANOVA. Are you happy with this? Yes, and it's computing, including bootstrap analysis. This takes another 10 minutes. And once this is done, we can start looking at the results. That's the next menu on the list, uh, Limo results. And we're going to click image all. And uh, here, select the file that was generated for the ANOVA, repeated ANOVA. And so it's going to show us all the electrodes and the scalp topography. And uh, we can also use clustering. Uh, so that's a method for correcting for multiple comparison. There is a, a, a lecture on statistics containing details about this method. So that's now corrected for multiple comparison. We can also click on specific parts of the image at specific latencies to see uh, the contrast difference. So here you see a scalp topography that looks very much like the one we had in EG Lab. It makes sense because it's a very similar analysis. Now we're going to look at contrast. So to look at contrast, we have to first load a LIMO matrix. So now we loaded a LIMO matrix. And at this stage, the ANOVA results tells us that 
where and when this condition differ. To check which condition uh, differs from the others, post-talk contrast can be performed between pairs of condition. So I'm going to show uh, the different contrasts on the screen here. We have familiar faces versus scramble faces, which could be beta 1 minus beta 2, and familiar faces versus scramble faces, which would be beta 3 minus beta 2, and familiar faces versus unfamiliar faces, which would be beta 1 minus beta 3. Now that these analysis differ from performing ad hoc t-tests, mostly because we're computing within the repeated measure ANOVA model, which accounts for all conditions, and also they are not directional because we rely on F statistics. We can also have more complex contrasts. For example, faces versus scramble faces when we have the average of beta 1 and beta 3 compared to beta 2. This compares images containing faces with images not containing faces. Not that even though it seems like a hack to use these contrast matrices, this is exactly what statistical software do when performing post hoc analysis. So let's try this uh, uh, last one. Here we're going to enter the, the contrast and just uh, press done. It's asking, do we want to compute bootstrap? Yes, so we're computing all the bootstrap and now we're going to image these results. So that's the file that's named ESS. You might have to go to the parent folder. And now that's the comparison between faces and not faces. And we can also look at the given channel. So here it's plotting the channel with the most difference, that would be channel 2, along with the 95% confidence interval and the region of significance on the bottom uh, here. We can also correct for uh, multiple comparison using clustering. Again, we uh, can image all and also uh, look specifically at latency of interest. So now this is the com comparison between faces and non-faces. And this is very similar to what they found in the original uh, article. So this is the end of uh, this presentation and of the introduction to LIMO. The LIMO tutorial contains many more examples using this data set and I encourage you to look at it. I want to thank you for your attention and I hope to uh, see you in one of my future videos.